30. Girl, you 50. <laughs> if you wake up with pains in your body and you ain't did nothing the day before, you 50. <laughs> what I'm talking about, that hits you at 30. <laughs> amen, amen. Get your Bibles out. Amen, get your Bibles out. So glad to have our guest here on today. As we get ready to go into the Lord's Word. If you stand to your feet, we do a declaration here. We do it for a reason because the Bible's full of things that we need. So we have to declare them and we have to believe them. And declarations are saying something with your mouth. And when you put it into the environment, into the atmosphere, it causes things to change. How many of you believe what you say? Yeah. If so, if I believe what I'm saying and I'm putting it in an atmosphere, it causes things to change. So grab your Bible, lift your Bible in the air or your iPad, your iPod or whatever you have. Repeat these words after me. This is my Bible. I'm a benefactor because I believe what's in it. Every miracle, every promise, every word of God is true today and it's mine. I receive it. I claim it. I believe it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, let's learn something. Go to the book of Matthews. We've been in this series, series called Rise Up. And we're talking about being buried, being dead. And how do I come from a dead place? And we're really going to talk about what do I really do when God has put me there? So the book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 36. Say amen when you have it. Matthew 26 and 36. It's almost like I'm going to have to go a font a size up on my iPad. I'm like struggling. Like, what did that say? Somebody say age. And I'm still young. I can't see. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Look at Victor won't give me his glasses. Y'all there, Matthew 26, 36, you got it? All right. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. I read from the New Living Translation. And he said, sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on on a little farther and bowed with his face fell. He's, and when it says his face fell to the ground, the Greek would say he fell to his face. He fell down to his face to pray. He praying, he says, my father, it is impossible. Let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus lifted them a second time, left them a second time and prayed, my father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went to pray a third time saying the same things again 
Then he came to the disciples and said, go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But look, the time has come. The son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. We're going to speak from a subject today, praying beyond your barriers. Praying and having a prayer life beyond your barriers. Father, speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. He may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Your current position in your life, and I don't know who this is for, and this might not be for everybody, because people I've learned from uh, Deacon Harris, Jack Harris, my home church in New Jersey, he said, and I was 22 years old, and I didn't know what he was talking about then. And he said, you are going through three parts of your life, son. You're going to have, you either going to be in a storm, going into a storm, or coming out of a storm. Or you're going to find your place in, in dryness, a dry place. And there's oftentimes dry places seem like storms. Even though there's no rain, there's nothing you're suffering from, but a dry place is hard because you have nothing. And some of us are in a spiritual dry place or we are in a storm, but this message might not be for you because you might be in a beautiful place right now. But a storm is always brewing. As long as the devil can meet, as long as the devil can meet about you and understand he's meeting right now with his people, his demonic folk, you know who I'm talking about. The devil has those little people that get in your mind. It's most of the time he attacks you from inward, not outward. So it's not a person. We love to preach about haters because it sounds good. But oftentimes the devil's works, he works from the inside. He works from your memory, what happened to you when you were a child. And it caused you to act the way you act now. It's, a, it's, it's something on the inside that's oftentimes brewing up. And all it takes is a person to get you upset. All it takes is a person to get up under your skin. And all, that, all them issues come pouring out. So ask yourself, where are you now? Where are you now? Now that I've said that, where are you now? Now watch this. So I find myself at times that I'm in a place where I feel buried and my burial becomes my barrier because I'm in a place that I feel like I cannot move. I don't know who I'm talking to. You feel like you can't breathe. You feel like you can't make it. And it's hard to be in a place that you feel you are buried in. You cannot expand. Anybody been through seasons where you feel you're not growing and you're not moving? You talking to folk that have got the same, you ever meet people give you the same story they've been talking about for the last 10 years? Like, I don't know if I told you this before. Yeah, you told me 10 times. I'm trying to expand and I'm being buried. And this is the interesting part. We get frustrated and I'm telling you where frustration sets in. When it's God that's burying you. Watch this. When it's God that's killing you. See, y'all get no amens on that one. God's killing me. He's really killing me. He has to kill you because he can't even deal with you in your nonsense. So daily God is killing flesh off of you. See, some of y'all too spiritually deep and too, you know. I took psychology and I understand when you saying kid and all that. You too deep, baby. Hear me. God has to remove flesh from you. And he'll cut away and pull away stuff that's hurting you and harming you, but you think it feel good and it feels not. I see I, you get yourself in trouble when stuff feel good. When you make yourself like you got your chest all out. Y'all want to talk to me in this place when you proud. 
of some stuff. And God says, that, yeah, that right, right there, you got your chest all out? Yeah, I got to kill that. That, what, that right there, that's getting, that's keeping you where you are. That right there, I got the key. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. The stuff you, that's why I ain't getting no, you know I ain't getting no claps. You know why? Because people love the stuff they proud of, but oftentimes the stuff that you proud of is killing you and it needs to be buried. So God is, he's, he has you in a state of being buried because, watch this, and, and understand now, I change from God burying me and killing me to God planting me. There, there's a difference between him killing me, him burying me, and God planting you. Because if I'm a seed of the Lord and he's planting me, there's something better to come out on the other side. Now we're saying Amen. But before I can plant you, I have to inspect you. You got to be in my hand. I got to see what's wrong with you. Look at your neighbor and say, what's wrong with you? What's wrong? See, y'all too proper. Y'all too, what's wrong with you? No, what's wrong with you? That means everybody had to say it to somebody. That means every, there's something wrong with everybody in here. There's something that God has to move, something God has to pull at, something God has to remove, and then he can plant you. Now, the interesting thing is, is that I'm still frustrated. Y'all won't talk to me in here. I'm frustrated because, God, you killing the stuff that I'm proud of. But your pride is getting in the way of your salvation. Y'all not talking? Okay. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, he ain't gave me no Bible yet. He ain't gave me no Bible yet. He ain't gave me no Bible yet. All right, go to Isaiah 53. We got some of you deep, deep Christians up in here like, take me to the... I'm going to give them some Bible, brother. They need that, that word. Because, remember now, Jesus is going through anguish. He's going through uncertainty. He's going through pain. He's on his way to the cross to be crucified for us. And for me to be crucified, it does something to me psychologically because I'm walking to death. So psychologically, there's going to be some anguish. They're going to be, because it, you know, anybody, let me, can I give it to you real straight and plain? Anybody ever got to drive home with your mother and she going to whoop you when she get home? My, my mom, she ain't here today. I can talk about her. <laughs> she like she tell you on the phone while you at school like when you get home I'ma tear you up and then hang the phone up on you boom you so I'm driving in the car she playing music she singing it, I'm like Ooh, she happy we good but in my mind I'm still thinking about that last whooping I got and I'm like she ain't forget though she just like to wait till I take a shower. Get in the bed and comfortable, and then she come on with the light. Oh, you thought I forgot, didn't you? Get out of that bed. That's it. That's why kids getting in trouble now, because none of y'all know nothing about that. <laughs> but it does something when you go in and watch this. Jesus knows what he's about to go through, so it's anguish. He know he frustrated because God, this is my destiny. This is it for me? Father, I'm frustrated, but if your will be done. But it's hard because I ain't do nothing wrong. Are y'all in Isaiah 53? The Bible says he's done nothing wrong. He's done, he's done nothing. He's dying for us, for the human race. Watch this. By the time you get to verse 10, it says, watch this. It says, and it was the Lord's plan. Are y'all reading the Bible? I'm reading It was the Lord's plan that all this stuff happened. So it becomes frustrating when it's God doing it to me. Because I don't believe I I should have to go through all this. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Why am I going through this? Lord, why are you doing this? I shouldn't have to go through all this, Lord. Y'all not talking to me. You know, you don't talk to God. Don't, Don't play that church stuff with me. 
Ah, Father God, I thank you so much. No, no. When you got some stuff going on, you like, Lord, what is the problem? I started going to church. I even gave some money and you got me stressed. None of y'all want to talk to me in here. Now, I done went three weeks in a row and you let these fools come up it. Y'all not talking to me in here. Who, it, it, oh, it's just me. I only, I only talk to the Lord like that. Rest of y'all all perfect. Father, help me. National Grid gave me the turn off. And I only got 250 in the bank. You, y'all, y'all, that's how y'all talk to God? You know how I talk to God? This bill, where my wife at? Lord Chrissy, I'm here. Cause that, <laughs> y'all not talking to me in here. Y'all, y'all, y'all. I, I ain't even run this. I, I ain't even been home. I leave everything off. The heat on six. Lord, what's the problem? Y'all not talking to me in here. I got the heat on 62. We done bought a $400 comforter. We could, you get out the bed, run to the bathroom, go and then come back. Like, Lord have mercy. Now, God. You done had me go through all that and this bill 250. And they told me I got a back bill from last winter for 480. What's the problem? I thought I had a payment plan. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. See, some of y'all, I know all of y'all play y'all bills on time. Payment plan, what is that? I didn't know National Grid does, does that. If folk come to church, they trip me out, man. They get all conceited. But how many really have to talk to the Lord? Can I be real? When you've been saved all your life, you go to the hospital, and this is a, a, a man named Daryl. He uh, served on a basketball league I do, and he has stage four cancer. And this man, every time I see him, and Steve can attest, he say Jesus about 18 times in the conversation. Hey, brother, pastor, love you. Jesus, love you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm like, Jesus, Jesus. And he has stage four cancer and he has to get flown somewhere because the cancer is so deep. Only 8,000 people a year get this cancer. But he still, yesterday we had an award ceremony. Do you know this man was still worshiping God in an award ceremony? Wasn't no organ playing, wasn't no piano on, but he kept talking about, gee, y'all not talking to me in here. What happens when it's the Lord's plan for you to go through some stuff. Uh, so the lowest points of my life define my relationship with God. The lowest point, not the high points. You know, you, you, all of y'all, been, we all grown in here mostly, except for my little cousins right there. The rest of y'all grown. Some of y'all think y'all been in a relationship, but y'all ain't been in a relationship yet. Where You've poured time into the relationship and things are going good. And then, you know, y'all go through some stuff and you go through low points. That's when you find out if the person with you or not with you. When you make mistakes, when you go through trials, if the person is still there, something is right person is gone or they switch up how they act now I got questions about the relationship so God says in the low points when yes it's my hand upon you yet it's me burying you will you still trust me or will you stop coming to church will you hide out in the back will you say I'm going through I don't want to will you trust me will you still pray to me will you still worship me even though it's me that's burying you I'm trying to help y'all today so Jesus says in Matthew 26 and 36 he, I want to give you a couple points he says his soul is crushed with grief to the point of death but watch this. He tells us, his guys, he says, stay here and keep watch for me. Somebody tell, tell somebody, stay here. Stay. Y'all know what stay here mean? Let me give y'all the stay here. Y'all got to get a clear understanding. You ever tell your kids to stay still because they like right behind you all day? You like stay he here. <clears throat> Stop 
moving. Because kids, I work in the school, kids be right behind you the whole time. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, get it, get it. But stay, don't move. And some of y'all need to tell some of y'all friends that because they can't go where you're going. So you like, because watch this, I'm trying to figure out my destiny. And I cannot find out my destiny until I find out my identity. So I can't find my identity out if I got folk with me that are molding who I am when it's not God molding, but it's people. So I need to tell them, stay here. Don't come with me because I'm struggling with my destiny and you're messing up my identity. So he says, go. He goes away. Somebody say isolation. Now we know that Gethsemane, if you understand, and this up here is a picture of Gethsemane, Jesus praying. He's, and, and I'm sorry, but he's not looking all holy like that. The Bible says his face, he fell to the ground with his face to the ground because it was so much pain and anguish that while he was play, praying, He's crying out to the Lord. He's arguing with the Lord. But then he says, but thy will be done. I'm in isolation. Watch this. He's in a very heavily dense tree population. There's trees everywhere. So when he says he's walking away and he's leaving them, he got to move a little bit. If you've ever been camping before in a heavily dense tree population you can move five feet and you can lose the person you're with so he moves away where they can't see him but he's on his face and he's praying to the Lord Lord and he has to leave them while he's praying because they'll probably mess his prayer up you don't have to you know people you don't have to go through this you don't have to do this you can stay here with us no that's not my destiny my destiny is to go through it. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to go through it. You got to. I know that ain't right English, but you got to go through this stuff. Because God's saying, I, I, my glory will be seen. So I'm learning. He, he prays a prayer. So the first thing he has to do, he has to isolate himself so he'll understand his identity so he can complete his destiny. You understand? So he has to isolate himself. I'm going to say it again. So he can know who he is so he can fulfill the destiny of God for his life. Father, if your will. He has to know what the will of God is. He understands that the will of God, and guess what? The will of God does not always look like what you see in your mind. The will in your mind, what you think? I, I'm gonna own a business, I'm gonna buy a house, I'm gonna buy a car, and all that. Now listen, it's the will of God that you that you're blessed. All that comes with it. But it's more so the will of God that you don't live a life of just surviving. Because a car is a car payment, a house is a mortgage, all that is stuff that you can have, but you're still only surviving in this world. He wants to see you go to the next dimension. And if you're going to go to the next dimension, you're going to have to let some stuff go. Because you can have the car, the house, all that, and lose God. Look at your neighbor and say, if his will be done. It's not the Noah's will. His will is your destiny. So he's, it's his assignment. So he goes farther, he falls to his face. And in between verses 41 to 45, three times he says the same thing. Three times. In 42, he says, my father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. In 44, it says, and so he went to pray and said the same thing a third time. I'm in isolation I got to know my identity, to know my destiny. 
and I have to repeat God's will for my life. I have to keep repeating, if thy will be done, if thy will. Why am I, why am I repeating it? Because I got to start believing it. This leads to my next point. You, I'm going to use me. Me, I have an issue because I do believe, but I don't know. That's my next point. I do believe, but I don't know. Let me help y'all out. So I believe God can do it but I don't know how. And I really don't know until it's done. Believing is dealing with the unknown, something you can't see, something you have not experienced yet, and you really don't know. And it's a struggle when you don't know. But you believe. Am I helping y'all out here? So I'm believing God for it, but I have not seen it yet, and I have not experienced. Now faith. Is the thing hoped for. And it's something, watch this, that is unseen. Faith is something unseen. I have not seen it. I have not dealt with it yet. We have not even lived the next week or the next two years. We have not seen it yet, so we don't know, but we believe. Somebody say, help me out, pastor. Help me out. This thing is no, the Bible, if you just read it, <laughs> it will blow your mind. This thing bothered me because last night, and I'm like, come on, God, God. I study hard, and I, I work my sermons at least 90 days before I preach them. And he always comes like the night before and says things that be, I, I'm, I'm like, what did he just say? He'd be like, you believe, but you don't know. And then God just walk away. You'd be like, God deep. <laughs> You believe, but you don't know yet. Watch this. And that tells me, when he does that to me, he's telling me, pick your word up and watch my spirit lead you what you need to get. So go to John 15. And I also want you to go to John 11. Now, John 15, just write it down. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Didn't say you got to do it. It said it'd be done for you. I just need you to believe. That's your action. You ain't going to know, but you got to believe. Now go to John 15, and I'm going to give you John yeah, 11, and I'm going to give you some context. John 11. Say amen when you have it. Now I'm going to walk you through it. You just get there. And we, we'll be done after this. Lazarus. Remember Lazarus? Right? So let me just fast forward. Because we're talking about believing but not knowing. But my belief is what's going to get me to know. I'm telling you, this is God speaking. This ain't me. I'm, I'm confused. Last night, I'm sitting there like, you, you better show me something. And then he puts you up front and be like, you're going to say it because my spirit going to lead you to say it. Because I'm telling you, I'm praying right there today. I'm like, Lord, I ain't doing John 11, man. You please. And by the time you get up, he's like, you're going to do it. So I got to be obedient. Because it shows me something about prayer from a place, and you've allowed barriers to keep you down. I promise I'm done. I promise you. John 11, y'all there? So he's dealing with Lazarus, and, and, and if you go around 39, verse 39, and let me give you a little context. He, he done came on the scene. They've been calling Jesus. Jesus ain't show up. He funny acting. They're like, oh, Lord, we need you to come on down here, Mary. Like, my, my, you know, Lazarus sick. He about to die. Jesus like, hold up. Be down in a minute. I got to stop by Walmart, pick up a couple things. And we going to go to the store. And we got to go by down there, go downtown real quick. And then we're going to come by there. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You know, when you got a family member, everybody got one family member that got a couple of dollars. And you can't hardly do the funeral right till they get there. And they down in Alabama. And you got to wait until they get up to Syracuse. Like, we ain't going to be able to bury them until next week because we waiting on him to come. Y'all know who I'm talking about, Uncle Teddy. If somebody in the family, you got to wait for Uncle Teddy want to make sure the wet bar right when he get there. He ain't saved now. Y'all, You know what? Y'all, I can't stand none of y'all in here today because y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Y'all got the one uncle that you waiting on to get there that's going to clear things up. You got people fighting and carrying on. You don't find out who folk is till death has happened. Then everybody, that was my auntie, and I was her favorite. 
Y'all know what I'm talking about. Who you doing all this here? And it's Uncle Teddy you they get up there and tell everybody, shut up, sit down. Everybody sit down. And they sit down. Now I have my Uncle Paul, he passed away, but he was the one that'd keep my Aunt Irene crazy self in line and keep all the family members straight, because all he do is stand up and he wouldn't even yell, just sit down, be quiet. So they waiting. And the thing about that uncle, he got stopped in South Carolina, pick up Gracie Lee. He got stopped through Kentucky, pick up that one aunt that you don't like. He got stopped by Maryland. We on our way. You keep calling them. I'm talking about Jesus now because they waiting on Jesus to come. Because by the time he get there, Lazarus is dead. And he stinks. Because death stinks. Some of y'all can't stand being with yourself because you stink. And we ain't talking about no physical order. order. We talking about your spiritual self. So he finds himself there and, ha- and then he come on the scene and, and he late. and he, We done had the funeral already. Okay, he's stinking. And you, Jesus don't tell Mary, roll, roll the stone away. Mary said, no, I'm not. He stank. That's my brother, but he stay. I don't know who I'm talking to. How many people done put y'all down and left you out for dead? Don't even want to deal with you. Tired. Y'all don't want to talk. Tired of you. Death. He's dead. Now watch this. So Jesus says, in 39, roll the stone aside. Jesus told him, but Martha, the dead man's sister, protested the Lord. He has been dead for four days. The smell, we will be horrible. Terrible. Don't, don't open it up. <clears throat> watch this didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe <clears throat> this is Jesus speaking didn't I tell you that if you believe now I told you this when I was in Alabama three days ago but you ain't believe me I told you I ain't had to rush up here because God's glory will be seen I don't care he says you always hear me but Jesus has not prayed Nowhere else, he just keeps telling Martha, God's glory will be seen. Help me out. Your prayer is not just what you say when you get on your knees. Your prayer is what you say when you just go and do stuff day to day, in the morning, midday, in your car, stressed out, messed up. What are you saying when you're messed up? What are you saying when people call you a drama? What? It's coming out of your mouth because that is what God's going to hear. That's your prayer. You cannot hear this. You can't switch up what you're going to say when you pray. Like you told somebody, mm-hmm, it ain't going to work out. There's too much going on. You don't need to go help me. Make this work out. No, he says, what have you been saying? Because Jesus said, Lord, you already heard me before. And what did what he keep repeating? Jesus kept saying, God's glory will be seen. God's glory will be seen. I gave you this week to say that a hundred times. God's glory will be seen. I know it's wrong, but God's glory will be seen. I know it's a dead situation, but God's glory will be seen. I know things are tough, but God's glory will be seen. I know it's hard, but God's glory will be seen. Now watch this, watch this. He says, now watch Jesus. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. It's the second. He did not speak to the grave. He did not speak to the grave clothes. He speak to Lazarus first. Jesus is speaking to you before he speak to the man. He's not speaking to the storm. He's talking to you. Y'all still listening. He's still listening. He's not talking to four or your child. So you can come up. 
are going to be crazy up in here. You need to come out so you can come up, so you can, I y'all not hear me in this place. I'll come, the first thing you got to do is get up. You can't come out of it if you won't get up. You say it after come out of it so you can stand up. You can't stand up in the grave. The storm has been keeping you. You got to get up from where you are so you can come up. Well, y'all won't talk to me. Look at me. People say, that should come up, baby. That should come up. That should come up. You want to come up? You want to get better? You can't come back till you come up. You can't get out of it until you come up. Y'all better come out of here. Look at me. People say, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out of sickness. Come out of this situation. Come out of these barriers. And then Jesus says, now that you come up and you come out, he tells the great clothes, get off of them. And it says, like the word says, and the great clothes that wrapped him, and Jesus says, unwrap him. Yeah, yeah. You got to stand up first and then the stuff will come off. Yeah, you got to stand, you got to come out first and those people got you tied down. But if you get up, Jesus said, read that word that says, he says, unwrap them. Gotta love that God can speak to some stuff in your life. He says, unwrap them. Uh-huh, hurt and disease, unwrap them. Cancer, unwrap him. Let him go. He come up, not he believed. And I know now, but look at him. He's standing, unwrap him. Get off of him. Look at your neighbor. The Bible 